This video is from my Most Important Cloud Concepts collection. If you'd like to watch the full series where I describe all concepts in a single video, check out the link in the description. The next topic that I'd like to talk about is something called event-driven architecture. And sometimes you'll hear this as uh, its acronym, which is EDA, or uh, Event Driven Architecture. But in order to understand this, let's talk about how we used to kind of communicate with other services or applications in the past. So say you had an application, maybe it's like an order application, maybe it's like Amazon, right? So Amazon. Amazon. Okay. And customers are placing orders, right? They're placing orders all the time. And one of the things that you need to do when you place an order, if you're, you're Amazon is that you, first you need to charge the customer, right? So you charge the customer and maybe in order to do that, you need to call some like credit card service or something like that. Credit card service. Right. And the next thing that you need to do is maybe you need to call some like warehouse service warehouse to kind of see if there's anything in stock or just confirm that there's something in stock and then kind of kickstart the process to, um, you know, start picking the order and packing it and all the things that they do. Um, so this is kind of like a fulfillment or FC uh, service. And then maybe you also have some like fraud and analytics kind of concept, right? So fraud where people are placing orders, maybe it's with like stolen credit cards or something. So if you start the process of placing the order, you may want to interrupt it at a certain point in time if there's some kind of you know fraud vector that's being abused here, right? So like there's fraud that could potentially be an issue. So what we used to do in the past, um, before this whole concept of event-driven architecture ever came up, was you know an, app, an order would come in and then we would synchronously call the different things in order, right? We would first try to, to charge the customer. Okay, if that returns success, great. Now we would call the FC service and say like, okay, start picking it back in the order. And then maybe the third thing that we would do, or maybe this is the first thing we can kind of reverse the order if we want, is we would call the fraud detection service. This is what's called the request response model. So the problem with this approach is that it creates what we call tight coupling between your dependencies, tight coupling. It means that the service that's over here, right, which is kind of the, um, the thing that brokers the 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 orchestr or orchestrates rather the coordination across these different uh, underlying services needs to know about these different components, right? It needs to know how to charge a customer. It needs to know how to initiate a fulfillment for this order. It needs to know that like this fraud application exists and is listening for events, right? So this is like the request response model. And part of the problem with it is that like you have this tight coupling concept. And this is where event driven architecture starts to come into play. So let me draw this out for you in the context of event driven architectures to show you as a comparison what this looks like. Okay, so we're going to use the same kind of concept, right? So we still have our Amazon application down here. And it works in a very similar way. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, the diagram is going to look like very, very similar. Uh, but essentially, the idea is that instead of Amazon, uh, the Amazon application or like the order taking application synchronously calling the credit card application and the FC application and the fraud application, essentially what it does is it sends a message to a notification engine. OK, and it basically will say, OK, customer placed an order. So it's going to send a notification to this piece of infrastructure, right? Usually in the context of AWS, there's two services that allow you to do this. The first one is called SNS and the second one is called EventBridge or EB for short. And essentially what this service will do or what Amazon will do when it sends this message to this service is be like, okay, here are the details for this thing. So it's order ID uh, one, two, three. It costs, you know, a hundred dollars. And, you know, a whole bunch of other metadata. Here's the customer ID. Here's all the different things that are related to it. And it's kind of like an envelope. So you can think of it as like a, an envelope that uh, contains the payload for the order that the customer just placed. And what happens is that using this model, um, the SNS or EventBridge service are able to distribute a copy of this message to any number of consumers that are currently subscribed to this piece of infrastructure, this envelope, so to speak which is either an SNS topic or an EventBridge event bus in the context of AWS. And so what this allows you to do, and so to complete this picture, you know, talking about a previous example, a subscriber of this data would be the credit card application. Another subscriber would be the FC application. Another 
subscriber would be the fraud detection application and n number of applications that you can add, right? There's no, there's no limit to the number of like outbound arrows. We call this fanning out because you can fan out uh, and add more dependencies as you wish. Now, the great part about using this uh, kind of paradigm is that the service that kind of created the events, right, which was the order taking service in this initial case, no longer needs to know about any of the downstream use cases that are related to it, right? It no longer needs to care about the fact that like, oh, there's an FC processing service, there's a credit card service, there's a fraud service or whatever service may come. Um, so this is, it allows for decoupling, right? Decoupling which is the main advantage of using event-driven architectures. Now, you may ask yourself, okay, doesn't this introduce problems? Like if you place an order, right, and the credit card processing, like we fire a notification off, credit card processing system gets it, that succeeds. Um, the FC processing system gets it, that succeeds. But then the fraud detection system is like, oh, shoot, like this is a, not a, um, a valid order. It's actually fraud. What happens now? Don't we kind of need to somehow resolve this issue? Like we need to indicate to the FC service, like, hey, stop what you're doing. Credit card system, go issue a refund for this or, or whatever it may be. This is true. It's actually like one of the complexities of using event-driven architectures, but there are ways around it. So what you can do is like distribute a new message from the order taking service that says, hey, this order was canceled and then redistribute that to your downstreams. And then they can start like reversing what they did previously. Okay. Um, so this is event-driven architecture, an extremely, extremely powerful paradigm in contrast with request response and it's something that you see more and more of in cloud providers and cloud computing in general because it allows you to seamlessly add new dependencies uh, without the producer of the messages having to worry about it. Uh, there's two other terms that I just wanted to briefly touch on that are important in this event-driven ar architecture world. Um, the first one is called publisher. It's a publisher. And the publisher is like Amazon in this case, right? It's the person that is producing the message. And the other one is subscriber, right? Subscriber. And subscribers are, are these categories of people over here, these categories of services. These are the consumers of your, of your data or your information. And typically you hear this in short form. It's often called PubSub uh, for short. Um, so that's what, what these terms mean if you ever hear them in the context of event-driven architecture. Okay, so that's it for this topic. Let's move on now and talk about our next one. And again, making some more space for me here. 